As a child, I experienced trauma as sexual abuse. I do have these things that affect me in my own relationships with my friends, my family, people I love. It's really hard for me to kind of have, to just be able to trust those around me. So I have like a kind of a small circle of people I can come to. Kenneth's story is very unique. And the reason is there's not many people who can do what Kenneth has done. For many people, getting sober, getting your life on track, engaging with your family, getting your kids back, overcoming legal obstacles or barriers. Uh, for many, that's enough. For Kenneth, that wasn't even just a scratch of the surface. Because Kenneth was at such a dark place in his life when he found running, it became his medicine, and then I believe it became part of his soul. I'm running the race because it's the week of my mom's birthday. I want to have her remembered not so much as her problem, but more or less like of a mother who cared for children who was taken off this planet too early. But this is also another remembrance for those who have people that they love in recovery that they're not sure if they're gonna be able to see the next day. I love this person, I want the best for them, but do they want the best for themselves? This journey is another success story, an incredible and scold for the fact that we get to see this day in and day out, and then put really kind of the crown jewel so far of our success stories on this journey. It will pull everybody along with him. He is known in our community as like the most fearless guy out there. Any challenge he's willing to take on head on in life and running. If you run with him, you know he go he's like a bull. He goes head on into like any run full blast. And you know, he might do a 24 mile trail run on a Saturday and then a 15 mile run on the roads on a Sunday. And making sure we stack both of those together to give him a really big stress to mimic what he might see out there on the roads of Texas. That's what's gonna help him continue you know, getting ready for this. This is as clean as they're gonna get. And then...
the end of this, it'll be 44 miles. So. All right. He's very passionate what he does and it's infectious, you know, and it shows that um, whether it's your second, third or fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth chance at this, at recovery or at life um, or, you know, it's, it's never too late, you know, like, I mean, it's just that the message that we carry, um, that we're the faces and voices of recovery and that we show that recovery is possible, that there's life after drinking and there's life after drugs, you know, the same energy we apply to our drugs and alcohol. We apply it to everything else, not just running, but everything else that we do, like even him helping people, you know? We live by a, more, uh, a code, uh, half measures avail us nothing. People with substance use disorder, um, you know, you just think of them as uh, morally polluted people. Less than, you know, uh, we have a stigma on us. And it's funny how everybody's like, oh, well, running's an addiction. It's, it's, it's just replacing one addiction for another. But now, if you see him out there, you see us all laughing and smiling, that doesn't look like an addiction to me. That looks like a passion. You can see down on both sides of the road, it kind of just curves outward. Um, it does that naturally so the water doesn't stay on the road, but over the next 800 miles, uh, that one ankle, it's, we're gonna have to try and switch sides of the roads just so it works on both ankles. But uh, he's stretching it out right now. Um, we'll probably have to wrap it tomorrow um, and just adapt. That's all you had on? Yeah. Wow. Do you still want... Oh yeah, let me see that one too. That's what I thought, like, turn on the short sleeve under. No. Go. I have people in my life today who I love dearly and I would do anything for, but I don't know if they're willing to do it for themselves just yet. And I think that this run, it's all about recovery. We all have that loved one that goes through trials and tribulations that we want for the best for and to get past that darkness. One, that's one of the things that my family had to wait for me. They weren't sure I was I was gonna make it through this, and you know I'm glad that they they weren't always there to hold my hand. I had to go through it myself first and kind of be like, okay, like if I do this, then things are gonna come through at the end, and you know it's not the way that I thought it was gonna pan out. Definitely nothing that I dreamed of. I didn't think I was gonna be sitting here in front of y'all. When you discover it later on in life, and you realize that it's something that you didn't just stumble upon you're doing it because your parents want you to or you happen to be talented at it. He genuinely loves what he's doing. And then continuing to dial in the other aspects of how we're going to make it a sustainable effort out there, meaning what kind of shoes are you going to wear, socks, clothes, nutrition, um, your support crew, and making sure all of those are dialed in. You know, you would hate for something like this to be thrown off because you get a humongous blister on your toe and then you're limping. You're limping because of the blister, it causes your knee to hurt, right? If we can have those things dialed in so it's as comfortable as possible and it's as, as sustainable as possible, then it's gonna be a successful day for another. Because I have no doubt, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, he's ready for this. He's going to crush it. But we need to make sure that everything else around him is set up so that we can lift him up and he can do it faster, stronger, and in a way where he's gonna come out of it maybe wanting to do other amazing things. The thing that he has to work hardest against is himself, truly. Sometimes compensations are exposed where he is trying his hardest not to allow something to happen and it is still taking place. He has to continue to try and try until he overcomes that difficulty, conquers it, and then can work right through it and teach his body what it needs to do. It wasn't good and then it got good? Yeah. It's not about Ken. Ken does this stuff so that, so that he can be out there you know, 
giving back for something bigger than itself. Our work at Haven's not easy. Campus life is definitely not easy. It's a 24 seven operation. Um, so his ability to be able to do that and continue to come into work and continue to be dedicated to the work that he does is, is truly astonishing. Who he is and like who he is authentically, how he is with people, and the fact that he puts in the work and shows up every day is what I admire most about him. Actually, I had met him prior to uh, me working for Pay It Forward is when I was a resident there. The things that I saw, the way that he carried himself, his recovery was attractive to me. He gave me hope that I could potentially someday, you know, go on a journey of staying clean and sober long term. With a race as long as this one, Ken's body and his muscles are going to need to perform as best as they can. His muscles are going to need to absorb the force of the many miles that are put on his body. That force needs to be dispersed through these muscles like shocks on a car. They need to be dispersed evenly so that way he can keep running over this extended period of time. Any kind of connection between how tough it was in getting clean and how tough this has been getting to the next stopping point? I think it's both following the rules on both accounts. I'm following the rules to the road and following the rules to sobriety. You can't ride with the highs and you can't ride with the lows, you know, you, you can't just depend, you can't just dictate where you're at on that day just because you're at your lowest and you can't dictate on the day on that day just because you're at your highest either and I think that's the same way with my sobriety I mean like I can wake up and have that attitude of gratitude or I can wake up feeling like as if I'm entitled to something and then at the end of the day I can remember you know like man was I feeling like was I a piece of shit today or was I was I really you know grateful for the things that came into my my life today you know and I think it all correlates with each other you know uh, same way with with the running well I woke up feeling okay not motivated I even told them at the first 10 miles I was like and I was I was at a great time too I was like I'm just not motivated guys and they're like it's all right just keep on going and then and then my BMO on top of that it wasn't just my lack of motivation my body started falling apart on me and then I started I started feeling sorry for myself and I sat in the bed for about 30 minutes with the machine on me and the machine helped but not to the timing that I wanted it to help and then my buddy showed up and that helped get my mind off of things for a little bit until my body started catching up to the fact that like you know you better get out of it get out of that funk and it, I've been on a roll since it's awesome. They were like, dude, we've been following Ken for years. I mean, like, I tell him too, like, I, I feel it. I think it's a size 13 shoe. Like, it's right here at Franklin Ave and whatever this major so intersection Frank, is. Franklin Ave. You're staying on Franklin Ave in North Valley Mills. That's about four miles from here. Yeah. Right there. Perfect. I'll be in that area. Toenail, put your fall off any minute. <laughs> Again. Still filling.
pick it up if I really wanted to, but he said, do it enough where you, you know, you're feeling it, right? You know, you're, you're feeling some sort of activation, but enough where it's like, very warm. Yeah. Get chill. Awesome. Do you mind popping it on so no. we can, yeah. we want to, here, I'm yeah. going to pull that. Maximus, can you, because we want to get a, a picture of you in, in the shirt too, yeah, maybe pull in your shoes. Yeah, and the new one too, with it being wider, I can see where it could like kind of even help like. Yes. each other for a couple years now. I've had the privilege of having him on my podcast, which is cool. And um, he's always coming out to support us at races. So I figured why not drive up here to uh, to Waco since he was coming through. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna, I ran a 50 miler last Saturday, which sounds uh, silly to say that I'm not gonna run very far considering what he's doing, but I'm, I'm gonna try to hang in for, you know, five to 10 miles and uh, just get some time out here with him. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. Oh yeah? Okay. 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 just been hitting this ghetto te technique of icing everything down and throwing a bunch of icy hot and everything on here and just go going and I think part of it was that you know my homies came out and it kind of like helped get my mind off of it and I'm not the type to want to run with people but if there was ever a time I really wanted to run with people that was the time right there That's awesome, home man. stretch man home stretch good time When most people would run that attempt this, don't even try to run it this fast or this hard. So it's a testament to that about how how he trains. You know, we have a good coach. Him and I have the same coach, Ryan Miller, who's an elite runner. And I mean, he's been he's been building him up for about a year, a year and a half. And uh, it, it, and, and 
and he listens. I mean, it, it takes one thing to have a coach, but it's another thing to listen to the coach. It takes suggestions. So he's, I mean, he's also built different. I mean, not just because you train doesn't mean you can do this kind of stuff, you know. And he, he's just built different. Like he's always been different. He's just, he's a maniac. No one I. Just do look in the camera. On this one, they, these are a lot flatter than. Yeah. yeah. All right. Come Shit, bro. <laughs> you can't ask too much. Especially Can you just real quick tell us why you're here? To help support. I'm uh, here for the same. same thing, you know? Oh, okay. Um, myself, yeah. I'm a recovering alcoholic and um, looking out for others that are struggling and being of inspiration and an example that there is, to me, life after death. This is an amazing life that we get to do. I never imagined myself being able to do this. And this man is amazing. He's an amazing inspiration. Keeps me grinding day in, day out, fighting that good fight. But um, I intend to uh, run all day today. And I figure, you know, I gotta be able to do it. And even when that hurt kicks in, I dig deep, you know, reflect on my past and know that we've overcome other obstacles and we can get through today too. And if my buddy Ken here is doing it day in, day out, two weeks straight, so um, I gotta be able to do it. Um, like I said, I just dig deep when it starts hurting, because it will start hurting, get through this. And you know, it's you no, know, not for us, but it's for something bigger than us. Much greater thing out there. Every day is worth living. Every day is definitely worth living for. literally running across the state uh, promoting this, I think is gonna be impactful not only in the San Antonio community, but it, it gets more eyes, right, on the issues uh, at hand for a lot of folks, which is mental health, substance use, and the importance of support in the community. Not only do they have a passion for running, uh, but they have a passion for supporting others, right? And they're amazing at what they do. I, I couldn't imagine uh, any other person or people crewing this type of event for Ken. Uh, he's in good hands, and that's a big reason why he's been so successful so far. I think he's 700 miles in, and he has a great support system between Leroy, Cassie, Luis, and all the other people that have come out uh, over the last week and a half. Couldn't be more proud of Ken, couldn't be more proud of the crew. I'm just looking forward to seeing Ken finish successfully. Yeah, so just kind of explain a little bit about uh, day 17 today. Uh, day 17, we're getting to the end. Uh, I've explained to the crew that, like, I've admitted time and time again, I'm not a strong finisher, so I need to get my head in the game um, on that, kind of finish strong on here. Uh, I was seven miles short of my, of my goal uh, for many reasons, but one of them is just lack of sleep. I'm just tired. I've mentally, I, I kept messing myself over by looking at the fact that, like, Day 17, you've been running 40 plus miles for the last 17 days, your, uh, your body's tired. Had I told myself that on day 14, day 13, day 12, day 9, day 8, that's mentally telling yourself like you're tired and you continue telling yourself that so you give into that, right? And so I've been pretty consistent on not giving into it 
but today was just one of those days where I was just like, ah, oh, you're tired, you need more sleep, and uh, and uh, I gave into it, and so I'm gonna get some more sleep tonight. Good afternoon from Rusk, Texas. On a beautiful day 17 of running. Uh, Ken did just over 30 miles today and uh, brought us to Whataburger for some from, for some lunch today. Uh, we're gonna go back out with the remaining 94 miles, 95 maybe, and split it up into two days and cross into Logansport here on Tuesday. Last week I've been at work checking Ken's feed all week, checking what Roel's been posting, who everybody's been posting, and uh, honestly it was tough. I wanted to come out here as soon as possible. So I took three days off in a row, actually two and a half days off in a row to make it out here for Ken's finish. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, Ken's a pretty quiet, pretty soft-spoken person to himself. I can tell today is a little rough. I don't wanna say grumpy is a word, but definitely uh, I have seen him just get a little snappy, a little snappier than he normally is. And I know it's just exhaustion. I know it's tired. I know his muscles have been hurting. I know his, you know, he's cramping all day. All, you know, his quads are tight. His feet hurt. Uh, just struggling through a lot of pain. And I think it's just he's so close to that finish line. He can smell it. So right around the corner, and just eager to get it over with. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It's it's pretty tough. Um, he's just a naturally a tough person. Just his testimony alone, just the things he's gone through, life to be alive today. You know, just all that. Uh, but I think Ken has just made, you know, he pulled a Goblins. He's just made the paint his friend, and he just tones it out. Actually, earlier today, we were, uh, I was riding the one wheel with him, and we are going down a downhill. And I asked him, I was like, man, you're moving fast. How are you doing that? I was like, does it hurt more to run it or to slow it down with the brakes on? He was like, they both hurt. It doesn't matter. And I was like, well, if you go faster, the, the quicker you can get it done. Almost sunset uh, in about another 30 minutes, but the sun hasn't even been out today. Uh, this will be the latest that Ken has been running these last 18 days, but uh, it's been hard on him the last couple of days, especially rolling at the pace that he has. Um, he's feeling it now, especially since nobody's here. Slowly and little by little, he's remembering his why, which is why he's still pushing right now at, at 5.05. Um, but he just wants it to be over with. Nacho cheese Doritos crunch stuff, that's my breading.
day. The worst, the worst kind of weather I hate running in. This would probably show that how much strength she has like given me no matter what she's been through i remember all the things that she's given me as far as like the assets that i need to get through here the little silver linings that she was able to kind of be like you're so loving and you're so kind and i don't know how i can deserve y'all and it's it's like those are the things that i would love to know that she remembered us as before leaving here was the fact that like i want to continue giving back the the things that i can give back as far as like running so what would she say to you her words of encouragement be on resident oh man <laughs> uh and just come home safe. Pumped up, we're fired up, bringing the team from from, from, from San Antonio, man, and, and Ken's is doing it. And uh, the same amount of energy he brings from work, he's bringing here, and uh, we're just super, super proud of him. Uh. And we are super excited to be here. I'm super grateful that I work with somebody that's so amazing. His willingness and dedication to complete this task for such an amazing organization like Pay It Forward just shows the kind of character he has. We are so excited. We are super proud of Kenny and all of his accomplishments. And this is just another one to add to the books. Way to go, Kenny. Congratulations, Kenny. That was an amazing feat that you just did. 19 days, over 800 miles. We are super proud of you. Um, the awareness that you're raising for Pay It Forward and everyone, um, again, super proud of you. Congratulations. Wow, I mean, he did it and I knew he would. I, I'm so proud of him. It's unfathomable what he just did and I just can't be any prouder. I can't express my sincerest gratitude for having the opportunity to experience this 850 mile journey with Ken. Running across the state of Texas, it's the most amazing experience I've ever had the opportunity to experience or witness. Thank you, Ken. Oh, but